Hello, North Valley kids. It's me, Brian, and I am very excited to be with you again this morning. So today, we are taking a break from our normal lesson to do a special lesson because today is Palm Sunday, and we're going to learn more about what that means in a little bit. But before we do, I do want to just uh, welcome you. I want to say it's good to see you, and I also want to invite you to stand on up because we're going to sing a couple songs today, and I even have a helper helping me out. So uh, without further ado, let's dance.
shining brighter than the sun. We're lighting up the world for everyone. I know we're never quitting, never done. We're only getting brighter and brighter. So raise one hand high, throw your light in the sky. We're gonna keep it shining forever. Oh, oh, oh. it's brightest when we're shining together. This little light. friends i hope you guys enjoyed those songs i know i did and one special encouragement i know i love that this little light of mine song my hope is that you guys understand that that song is about uh, not hiding our light but learning to let it shine um, so that others can see it and i know right now we're stuck at home so it's hard to let others see it but i would encourage you make sure you guys are being a light in your house to your brothers, your sisters, your mom and your dad, whoever it is that you live with, just be a light to them and try to have a good attitude and just do what's right. That's my encouragement for you guys uh, this week with this little light of mine. Well, it's now time to get into our lesson for today. So as I mentioned before, we are celebrating Palm Sunday. And what that means is, is there's a story in the Bible where uh, about a week before Easter, before we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, we have the story where Jesus arrives in Jerusalem riding on a donkey. And what's so special about this is that way back in the Old Testament, there was a prophet. We've been learning a lot about prophets, but there was a prophet named Zechariah. And Zechariah prophesied that one day uh, there would be a prophet a leader, a mess, the Messiah, who would ride into Jerusalem on a donkey. And it's found in Zechariah 9 9. I would encourage you guys to look it up after this video. But the verse basically says that rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you riding on a donkey. Um, humble and on a donkey on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So this story is amazing because what happens is Jesus decides to go to Jerusalem on Passover. And Passover is like the holiday if you are a Jew, if you're an Israelite, because it's the, it's the celebration of how God liberated them from the hands of Egypt. And you guys know that story where God calls Moses to be a redeemer, and then he helps Moses with all these plagues and different things to help uh, save his people you know, from being slaves in Egypt. Well, fast forward, uh, here we are, it's Passover, it's a big celebration, hundreds of thousands of people are present in the city of Jerusalem, and all of a sudden you see coming through the city gates this man on a donkey. And if you're a good Jew, you know the Torah, you know the Old Testament. 
So you knew that this means the king is arriving. And so as you can imagine, they are excited. They are overjoyed. They are taking off their coats. They're grabbing tree branches and they're waving them and they're laying them down at Jesus's feet, shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, which means save now, save now, because they were expecting Jesus to come as this new king to conquer uh, the Romans and take over and set up a new kingdom. Now, you and I know that's not exactly what happened because in only a few more days, we know Jesus dies on the cross. So this wasn't exactly what they were expecting. But what Jesus did do was set up a new way of things, a new kingdom where he is the king over all, and especially over sin. So let's go ahead and watch this quick video, and then we're going to get into uh, a few more things before I let you guys go today. It was time for the Israelites to celebrate Passover. Many Israelites had traveled to Jerusalem to remember what God had done when he rescued his people from slavery in Egypt. Jesus and his disciples traveled to Jerusalem too. When they arrived near Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples ahead into a village. As soon as you enter the village, Jesus told them, you will find a young donkey tied there. No one has ever sat on it. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it. The disciples did as Jesus asked. As they untied the donkey, its owner said to them, why are you untying the donkey? The Lord needs it, they said. Then they brought the donkey to Jesus, threw their robes onto the donkey, and helped Jesus get on it. People spread their robes along the road, and others spread palm branches cut from the fields. The whole crowd of the disciples praised God with a loud voice for all the miracles they had seen. The King who comes in the name of the Lord is the blessed one. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Hosanna. The word Hosanna means save now. The people knew Jesus was their promised King and they hoped he would save them from Rome. Some of the religious leaders said, teacher, tell your disciples to be quiet. Jesus answered, if they did not praise me, the rocks would praise me. The next day, Jesus went to the temple complex in Jerusalem and drove out everyone buying and selling in the temple. He quoted the prophet Isaiah and said, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you are making it into a den of thieves. While Jesus was in the temple complex, people who were blind and people who were lame came to him. The blind and the lame were not allowed to worship in the temple. Jesus healed them. Other religious leaders saw Jesus' miracle and heard the children saying, Hosanna to the son of David, or our king is here. They were angry and asked Jesus, do you hear what these children are saying? They are saying you are a king. Yes, Jesus replied. The psalmist said, you have prepared praise from the mouths of children and nursing infants. Jesus left them and went to the town of Bethany to spend the night. During Jesus' triumphal entry, the people welcomed him as king. Jesus was the Messiah spoken about by the prophet Zechariah. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. One day, Jesus will return to earth on a white horse as king over everything. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know I did. I am so looking forward to the day where Jesus returns to earth, not on a donkey, but on a horse, victorious, ready to set his kingdom up here forever. Well, we're going to watch now a quick question from kids. So let's check it out. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Eden from Tampa, Florida asks, My teacher at church said Jesus is the king of everything. If Jesus is a king, why did the people of Jerusalem kill him? 
Thanks for asking that question, Eden. It's a really good one, and we see part of the answer in today's Bible story, because today we see that Jesus was entering into Jerusalem, and everybody was shouting praise toward him. They were excited about seeing Jesus. But then we know just a few days later, many of those same people probably were crying out, crucify him. It seems like they just turned on Jesus. And the reason why is important. It's because they didn't understand who Jesus really was. When they thought of him being a king or a messiah, a deliverer, they were thinking about somebody who would deliver them from Rome probably, from this enemy people who were occupying their land and, and keeping them oppressed in Israel. And that's not what Jesus was about. He was about something even better than that. He wanted to free people from sin and death. But again, they didn't understand that, so they turned on him. The religious leaders were the same way. They didn't understand Jesus at all. They didn't understand why he had come. They really just saw Jesus as a threat. And so they wanted to get rid of Jesus any way they could. And the way they chose to do that was by making up stories, claiming he did things he did not do, and sending him to a trial and having him condemned to die as a traitor against Rome. And so that is why they rejected him as king. But for us, we know the truth that Jesus has come as the King of Kings to provide salvation for us from sin and from death. So how can we welcome Jesus into our lives today? All right, so that last question is how can we accept Jesus into our lives as King? And I think I'm going to leave it out there for you guys to think about for a second before I just answer. But I, I do think recognizing that um, we are not our own, um, but we are uh, subjects of a king, and we serve and we follow uh, uh, the greatest king, the king of all kings. And so the more we work on our obedience and following him and serving him and doing the things that he has called us to do, that's how I think we can serve our king um, more every single day. All right, well, let's look at our quick uh, big picture question for this next two weeks. The question is, it's a pretty easy one, uh, but it's who saves us from our sins? And I think you guys probably know the answer. Jesus saves us from our sins. There is nothing else that can be done, no, nothing that we can do in our own strength, nothing that um, anyone can do. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how hard you work here on this earth. It's through grace alone. It's through Jesus' death and resurrection that we have life and that we get to spend an eternity with him. So let's look at our memory verse. Um, real simple. This is out of uh, Romans 10, 9, and it goes like this. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. So let's do some motions together. Here we go. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I don't know, saved. <laughs> you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. Let's try it again. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. All right, guys. Well, that's our memory verse. I hope you're working on your memory verses. Don't stop. It's super important. The Bible says that we should hide God's word in our hearts that we might not sin against him. So that's my encouragement this week. Let's confess with our mouth, Jesus is Lord. Let's believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead so that we all can be saved. Love you guys. Can't wait to see you next week. And we'll go through another lesson on Easter. Oh, my goodness, next week is Easter. How cool is that? We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.